Welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. I'm in Ponte Vedra, Florida. Ironically, this is probably the congressional district. I know it's been redrawn so many times. Uh, congressional district now is Congressman Rutherford, I believe, who represents it. But it was once gov- uh, now Governor Ron DeSantis, who might one day be President Ron DeSantis. I asked him about that, the next step. I know he's focused on this legislative session. I got past that, but I want to ask him about the next step for him. Is it running for president? When will he decide? And what about this guy named President Donald Trump, who wants to be president again? Here's part two of my interview with Governor Ron DeSantis. Let's listen. A couple of things. Has Bob Iger reached out and tried to undo this and fix it? I haven't talked to him. And here's the thing. Like, the, the, the self-governing, that, that's done. Uh, they're not getting that back. It doesn't matter who calls. To, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, that, that, and because here's the thing, Brian. It is unjustifiable at this point. I mean, it's one thing they did it in the 60s. It was still a sweetheart deal. But there was nobody else there at the time. It was barren land. Now you've got all this activity, you've got other businesses, and it should be a level playing field. But I think really what they just need to do is go back to Walt's vision, uh, make sure it's family-friendly, don't hijack your programming to try to impose a woke agenda. Ultimately, that's not good for our country or society, but it's also not good for your bottom line. So the book is called The Courage to Be Free, Florida's Blueprint for America's Revival. So you believe other states can do this. You believe the country can benefit, even though now it was a purple state, maybe a a, a Republican state now. There are other states like California and Illinois. They're never going to buy into some of the things and you're going to get huge pushback from their, you know, if you uh, from their governors or anything. The blueprint won't work everywhere. Wouldn't you agree? Well, here's what I'd say. I mean, you know, I'm not uh, blind to the fact that in California there are twice as many Democrats as Republicans. Uh, and so I think the, it's, a, it's a big hill to climb. But what I would tell you what we did in Florida is, you know, I came in and won by 32,000 votes in 2018. 2022, I won by 1.5 million. I won Miami-Dade County, our biggest county, 2.8 million people, 70% Latino. I won it by double digits. And so we were able to get working class voters from a variety of, of backgrounds uh, to, to support us and support us very strongly. So you look at a place like California, uh, I don't think that could happen overnight, but I think that there's a lot of demographics there that reject the woke ideology. And I, know you'll uh, be I think there that they week. care about education. I think they want safe streets. I think they want a lot of the things that Florida's done. So what I would tell people is Rome wasn't built in a day, but I absolutely think you right. can make gains in those areas. But think about, Brian, what those governors do they spend half their time preoccupied with florida and they ignore a lot of the problems that they have i mean they're attacking me seems like every other day and so that should tell you something because i don't have to go and and attack other governors i focus on doing my job the fact that they're always attacking me shows you that florida is leading the way and they do view our model as a threat to their ideology so, Governor, when I'm to, as soon as I close the book, I said, this guy's running for president. I go, this seems to be a blueprint to run for president because if I look at your career and if I look at what you say, you don't just say this was good for today. This is good for families. This is good for a state. This is good for a country. You were concerned about the country from the day you stepped onto the, onto the uh, campus of Yale, reinforced it, uh, Harvard, fought for it in Iraq. Am I wrong to assume that there's an the excellent chance you're running for president? So what I would say is we've got a lot of support. A lot of people want us to do it. Um, I've got business to attend to. This book is part of that. Uh, my legislative session is part of that. Uh, so we get on the end of that in a couple months. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to see um, see where it goes. But I do think it's not all just about who ends up running for president. That's, that's important because I think nationally we need a change in direction. Uh, but I think our individual states do have the capacity to drive the national agenda. You know, Florida drove the national national agenda on so many things, on having kids in school during COVID, on opposing the, the, the employer vax mandates and things like that. Education, we've led the way. Uh, I like to see a competition amongst all the, all the red states about you know, who can kind of outdo each other. So right. I do think it's a blueprint for other states. I do think it can be applied nationally, but it's less about me than about, I think, the underlying principles uh, that we need to restore mm-hmm. our country. I read the whole thing, not one disparaging word about President Trump. Are you guys speaking now? Do you plan on speaking to him? He seems to be taking some shots at you. 
No, I mean, look, I, I mean, it's silly season. I mean, you know how how the, some of this stuff goes, and obviously he he does his thing, and it's just that's kind of kind of kind of who he is. But what I wanted to do was was just give an honest appraisal of kind of how we got to this point, the failures of the D.C. Republican establishment, and how Donald Trump was speaking to things that some of the old guard refused to address. And and that's just a fact. And, you know, he can say, you know, what he wants about me. I'll always give him credit for the things that he did uh, that were positive. And I'm, and I'm appreciative of a lot of, of the things uh, that he did. Doesn't mean I, you know, gr- gr- agree with, with everything um, that he's doing lately or whatever. Uh, but ultimately, it's about delivering for the people you represent and delivering for the country. So I wasn't really into kind of trying to, you know, throw pot shots at anybody. My thing was just kind of explaining, you know, my approach to leadership, the issues we've tackled in Florida, and how we've been able to, you know, see really uh, unprecedented success uh, for our state. Yeah, I just want to tell you, the New York Times did a review of your book. Here's a quote. The courage to be free is courageously free of anything that resembles charisma or discernible sense of humor. While his first book was weird and esoteric enough to obviously been written by a human, this one reads like a politician's memoir turned out by chat GPT. <laughs> Your thoughts? You who? <laughs> Chat GBT, the virtual. I don't even. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, no. Well, I think that the thing is, is a lot of the the, the critics will say, oh, someone else wrote it for him or whatever, and, and I wrote it. I mean, that's just that's just a fact. And um, you know, my my thing was not necessarily to um, you know try to do stories or gossip because you know that's a lot of the stuff that people like that do. I mean, they do like anonymous sources. They try to gossip. You know, we didn't need to do that. I mean, we're just talking about substance and we're just laying out the blueprint. Uh, Governor, I know you got to run. Uh, you told the story, so it's a good story. It'd certainly be a bestseller. I look forward to seeing you next week as we walk through your sports past. Okay, thanks so much. So I hope you enjoyed that interview. Listen, uh, Governor DeSantis lived this stuff. He wrote every word of that book, you could tell, almost verbatim were his answers from the book. Uh, and, of course, he embellished on some of them, including where he got married at Disney, and then what happened in the middle of the reception. It got rainy. Uh, and what his one line of the sand was, no characters at the wedding. Kind of cool, kind of funny. And you got that one sentence that he said at the end, I've worked, I really respect a lot of things that Donald Trump done. I think my word was respect. But um, I don't go on with everything he's done, including some of the things he's done lately. So, oops, game on. I just think that with Governor Ron DeSantis, the hardest thing is not so much to fight and to win. Number one, I think he fundamentally likes Trump. Number two, I also think he knows if I win the fight and don't win over Donald Trump supporters, I can't win. Even though I get the nomination, can't win. So it's a tough situation. Nikki Haley's dealing with the same thing. Tim Scott's dealing with the same thing. Uh, I think Mike Pompeo will eventually be dealing with the same thing. And Governor Mike and and Vice President Pence, he's already straddled that line better, better than anybody else. See how long it can last. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.